If we go to a show and we 19 deep and something happened and there's only three niggas out here in the field, bro, what the what y'all other niggas doing? Like, that about 16 more niggas just running around. Like, well, 15 could include me. 15 niggas just, just with us for nothing. Just to be looking good and have hope. Bro, get your name, man. Like, you ain't gonna stand on business or, or play a role if something go on. Like, move like an army. You ain't coming to the show, bro. You ain't coming. I, when you see me, I'm not moving with that many niggas. Everybody with me, we gonna protect ourselves for sure. We can't have no liabilities. Just get your goofy ass from around, bro. Tell a nigga get through some money. Bread through 20, she keep coming. Fuck you, time, little mom, keep coming. Send code, then you finna fuck my stomach. I don't get it gone from Monday to Sunday. I don't know what he said, but it smell like a honey. Running rounds in the gun, baby, bitch, keep coming. Mm -hmm. I said I got blue residents in my jeans. Uh -huh. My big dog and I hold out a lead. She be calling me back when I leave. Uh -huh. Uh -huh. Uh -huh. Oh, you said for me, huh? Uh -huh. We got blue, I be clean, no. Uh -huh. I'm like a red like a. what's up, two cat angus? It's your boy. So, friend, cat out the rip. Drop a like on the video, subscribe to the channel, join the family, because we live is doing this. All my videos live and tight authentic. I'm bringing in a little live body too. Ain't nobody else doing it like us. Now, off the rip, I do be moving my hands around a lot, but I. It, that's just me, man. I don't know. That's just me. But anyway, we got the first, the final 48 hours of my boy King Von. Long live King Von, man. Damn, King Von, bro. That boy was on to some. I ain't gonna lie. I was on that. He got a leaked song called Letter to Asian. And he got another one. He like, yeah, I say, I'm tripping, man. I don't know my feelings. You know what I'm saying? I'm feeling. Why you say I'm tripping? Y'all gotta search it up. Probably out now, but it was leaked when I was listening to it. That bit was hard. Like, that boy was getting on that harmony shit. You know what I'm saying? Once they got me feeling like I'm back in park, that shit was hard. But anyway, we finna react to the video, bro. Appreciate y'all for supporting. We going crazy, man. You know what I'm saying? Like, we, 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 we finna go crazy with this. I ain't even gonna do too much talking. We just finna go crazy. We finna rock out. Subscribe to the channel. Join the family. Appreciate the love and support. No cap. Make sure y'all get on me on my social media, bro. Let's get it to it, man. See what my boy Vaughn was talking about. It's crazy. If this shit accurate, bro, like, how the fuck y'all need to be finding out this type of information, bro? That boy's an enemy. Let's get him in. Dang. King Von would be one of five people shot outside Monaco Hookah Lounge in Atlanta. Shots fired at uh, Sheik in Monaco. Around 3.20 a.m., two groups of men began arguing outside, leading to gunfire. Two off-duty police officers were working security at the establishment that night, and they too engaged in the shootout. Because of this, a full investigation was conducted to see whether or not the Atlanta Police Department was involved in his death. Here's what they found retracing his steps for those last 48 hours. I ain't gonna lie. It probably sound crazy, bro, but y'all can't, that's why you can't have that many people with you. Like, you gotta have people with you, bro. But some of them niggas be pointless, bro. Like, in this situation, I, I ain't really just gonna speak on this exact video because I don't really know what, what everybody had going on. But I did just see a lot of niggas running and jumping over gates and getting the hell on. Not saying you ain't gonna run from, from, from bullets and run from fire, but why y'all with me, bro? Why y'all nigga, why, why y'all wanna be with me so bad? If we go to a show and we 19 deep and something happened and there's only three niggas out here in the field, bro, what the, what y'all other niggas doing? Like, that about 16 more niggas just running around. Like, well, 15 could include me. 15 niggas just, just with us for nothing. Just to be looking good and have hope. Bro, get your name, man. Like, you ain't gonna stand on business or, or play a role if something go on. Like, move like an army. You ain't coming to the show, bro. You ain't coming. I, when you see me, I'm not moving with that many niggas. Everybody with me, we gonna protect ourselves for sure. We can't have no liabilities. Just get your goofy ass from around, bro. Hell no, nah, bro. I break down the wood. I stuff it with Pat. I drop me your phone. On November 4th, 2020, King Von was in Atlanta, Georgia. He was celebrating the release of his Welcome to Oblock album that dropped just a few days prior. His career was peaking, and every day his music was being discovered by a new audience. There's no question he was about to be a superstar, Not but the real. biggest issue Von faced at that time was himself. See, King Von was from the infamous housing projects of Parkway Gardens on the south side of Chicago. Before ever stepping into a booth, he was already very active in the street life. Yeah. He only decided to rap after beating a murder case in 2017. His reputation only made his music more real for listeners, leading to his blow up. That's just crazy, and that was that's the crazy part. That's why people rock with Vaughn so much because the authenticity behind him. Like he got too many people. I was just on live the other day talking about this. I don't go live on my Instagram because a lot of niggas be watching me, bro. I don't like that. I got another Instagram called I don't drop. I be going live on there for like 
You know what I'm saying? I want less viewers to connect with y'all more and really chop it up. But uh, we was on there talk about this, and I was saying, bro, the reason they rock Vaughn so heavy is because that nigga authenticity. Like, you know his lyrics real. Like, you feel it. Like, even if, because that's the problem nowadays. Y'all need to be letting music get to y'all, and everybody want to be Vaughn. You know, everybody want to be shyster. Everybody want to be young. But y'all not these folks, bro. They rap. You in school. So just shut up and listen to the music. You know what I'm saying? But with Vaughn, it's like, you feel his lyrics a little more. Because you know, like, yeah, like, like, bro really on that, so it go a little harder. You know what I'm saying? Like, when niggas just rhyming, sounding good, that should be lame. One year after that. But it's important to realize when someone lives a life the way Vaughn did before fame, it can be hard to leave that mentality behind, even after finding a way out for music. Got, yeah, sort of because it. of this, Vaughn had no issue when it came to things like beefing with other rappers. While in Atlanta, an ongoing issue between King Vaughn and rapper NBA Youngboy had been brewing for hey, months. Y'all got to listen to them with the headphones on. That sound like that nigga outside with the car park got some slappers in the back. Actually, when it came to things like beefing with other rappers. While in Atlanta, oh. an ongoing issue between King Vaughn and rapper NBA Youngboy had been brewing for months. On November 4th, DJ Academics would invite Vaughn onto his podcast to publicly speak about their issues. During the conversation, Vaughn assured his fans that there was no real problem. And it was the internet just trying to make it more than what it was. Unknowing at the time that in under 48 hours, this would all come to an end. Ain't no rap beef and it ain't no real beef unless somebody got shot or something. Or you know what somebody... people told me? People told me well, you and Youngboy was beefing or something like that. I, you said something saying about, that Yo, what happened? Bob, what's going on with you, man? They be saying that a lot. It's like we got the same interests and, 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 and holes and dear. You know how the internet will try to make it. Don't tell me y'all got problems over girls. No, it's the internet, gang. It's the, it's the, you know, they are trying to make it like that. And that's that nigga's favorite two words, you know? That boy, you know? No, These issues have been know, escalating bro. since a few months before. You know? Pictures of King Vaughn and NBA Youngboy's ex girlfriends In just 36 weeks, Universal Technical Institute can train you for career welding. Bro, if you like ads, the idea like, of having a I'm flexible career. I'm going to react to music so the ads be like throwing off the reaction. They gotta so make their money, but like, be throwing out From the that point forward, the two rappers made it known they didn't like each other through a series of social media posts. With two artists this large going back and forth, it was only a matter of time before others got involved as well. One of those people would be Quando Rondo, an artist and friend of NBA Youngboy. Even though Vaughn and Quando were cool at one point, now they weren't. And it just so happens Quando's from Savannah, Georgia, only a four hour drive from Atlanta. I'm saying no 63rd. <laughs> On November 5th, King Vaughn woke up and gathered his entourage. What this that is? Scat? What? What that is? What that is right there? <laughs> Let me see. <laughs> Let me see. <laughs> Come on, nigga. That's the. On November 5th. Oh, it's SRT. Yeah, it's SRT. And Vaughn woke up and gathered his entourage. Yeah, okay. This included himself, his manager, and 20-some others. Around 11 p.m., just five hours before his passing, they headed out to Opium Nightclub. Vaughn was set to make an appearance and promote his new project. He hopped into his bulletproof Hellcat, followed by eight other cars filled with friends and What's associates. Bulletproof Hellcat? Yeah, Around midnight, they arrived. By this time, his manager was taking notice that something was off with Vaughn that night. He couldn't put his finger on it, but he felt like he wasn't himself, almost like he knew. They stayed at Opium for a few hours. Where he said it like he knew it. Y'all tell me something, bro. Because y'all already know the type of picture the internet be painting. Some people be saying this was planned and, you know, it was, you know, the S word. And some people be saying, like, it was an altercation that went far. Y'all let me know what y'all feel in the comments, and I'm reading them too. When appeared to be sure. enjoying themselves. So comment. Fans would upload videos online of Vaughn in the club, and from the looks of it, everything seemed normal. But these would be the last videos of King Vaughn smiling we would see. Hey, you know, it's all love for this shit. I, I done jumped that on that woman the woke black going crazy. I don't want to think about even going on. Around 2 a.m., just two hours before his time of death, he gathered his crew and they left the venue. According to his manager, everybody thought they were headed back to the Airbnb, but somewhere on their way home, they lost track of Vaughn's car. After realizing they lost him, they began calling his phone to see where he went, as it was very unlike him to leave without saying anything. So already confusions were already started, because normally if we got an after party or we got anything we're going to, we know as a team, everybody know to be on point. You know what I'm saying? We're traveling with a real deal gangster, a real stepper, so everybody gonna know how to move. But that night, 
I don't know what it was. Maybe it's got timing. I don't know what it was, but Vaughn completely. The way, hey, his own hey, one thing y'all do got to know, though. When it come to God making something happen, when it's God's time, when it's your time, it ain't sh nothing you can do. Nothing. You have a bulletproof car, you have a bulletproof house, you got a bulletproof jet, you got a bulletproof outfit, you can be bulletproof. It don't matter. When, it, when, it, when God got it wrote down, that's how it's going. His manager, and more importantly, his security, went with him everywhere. After calling, they found out he rerouted to an after-hours hookah lounge across town. A little before 3 a.m., Vaughn That's hard to believe, Monica, though, like, and decided to wait in his car. That's hard to believe, though. Like, my boy ain't finna reroute and go to an after party by himself, bro. It, 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 you just not finna do that, bro. If I'm, with, if, I'm, if I'm going to a club and I'm moving 15 deep and these people supposed to be my entourage or with me, like, security, they got my back. Like, these my family members. I'm not finna just reroute and go to a club as a superstar by myself, bro. You can be the toughest nigga on planet Earth, you're going to lose. you outnumbered. It's not going to happen. So that's kind of hard to believe, bro. Or while the rest of his entourage was still on their way. About 15 minutes went by, Vaughn's still in his bulletproof vehicle staying warm. His manager, followed by six other cars, pulled up to the parking lot. He hopped in the car with Vaughn, and once again, he said he felt like he wasn't himself. They stayed in there while the rest of his entourage was wondering what was going on. It was a cold night, so they too decided to wait in their cars. After a few minutes of talking, his manager convinced Vaughn it was time to go inside. He let his security team know he was ready to enter, so they did their normal checkup. Around 3.15 a.m., security went into the club and checked- Why it's time to go inside if it's just an after party, bro? Like, it ain't no- Get out to make sure it was clear of no time With Vaughn being a high-profile rapper, this was a standard procedure for them before entering any venue. They couldn't bring weapons in the club, so security left them in their cars. Right as they were about to walk in, one of Vaughn's friends alerted him that Quando Rondo was in a car just a few feet away. It's unknown if Vaughn got a tip from someone that night about Quando being at the club, or if it was just a coincidence that he rerouted uh, his car to the exact location. Hang on, nah. He got a tip for sure. He seen something that probably makes sense why he just leave without everybody else. That could be the reason. And they would both be at. It's possible it just happened like that. But this could have also been the reason Vaughn seemed off. Maybe he knew something no one else did. Ah, uh, yeah. That makes sense. Normally, Vaughn was calm, collective, and soft-spoken. Living the life he lives Stay back in court, Chicago, yeah. he knew how to handle these situations. But on this night, Vaughn reacted before anyone could say or do anything. He immediately hopped out of his vehicle, jewelry on and all, not knowing if Quando was alone or if he too had people with him. Only a few moments later, the two would come face to face, and just like Vaughn spoke about before, it was on sight. He threw punches at Quando, even before words could be exchanged. Others rushed over as the fight broke out. What Vaughn didn't know was the white vehicle Quando was standing next to had people from There's his school There's too many side. people. Look at that evening scattered like, I ain't, gonna, I ain't gonna lie. Niggas gotta run away from bullets, bro. Y'all probably like, bro, you sound crazy, but... Man... Bro, that's why I'm an introvert, bro. That's why I don't like being around a lot of people, bro. That's why I stay like one deep solo, man. Like At 3.20 a.m., only a few seconds after the fight had started, a gunshot from only a few feet away went off, striking Vaughn in his side and catching him completely off guard. You can see the gunman, who we now know as Lil' Tim, coming out from behind the car and firing multiple shots. Vaughn got hit three to four times and his manager was also hit in the leg. The Look two off-duty police officers working security that night well, reacted he, immediately he, he and made two fired shots into the crowd. But we can confirm now the shots that injured Vaughn came from Quando's side, not the police officers. The police would hit three people in total, one of them being Lil' Tim. Vaughn laid in the street holding on to Quano until Muop, one of Vaughn's good friends, broke up the fight. At 3.23 a.m., there were injuries on both sides. Instead of waiting for ambulances, their crews drugged their wounded into cars and sped off to the emergency room. According to those in the vehicle with Vaughn, he was still conscious throughout the ride, even telling one of his friends to calm down that he was going to be okay. Around 3.32 a.m., just moments apart from each other, both crews would arrive at Grady Hospital, which was less than 10 minutes away. Quano would start a live stream of himself helping Lil' Tim inside the building to try and protect himself in case Vaughn's people ran up on him. Come on, come on, come on, he's shot! 
Come on, come on. You heard what he said? <laughs> oh, that was a cold. That was a cold allegation, man. My boy say he put insurance on himself when he pulled up to the hospital. If y'all know what insurance mean, like, insurance mean, like, you protecting yourself without saying or basically protecting yourself. You know what I'm saying? So he's saying he went live just in case something happened, it could be on camera. You know what I'm saying? I ain't even think that far, though. I ain't even gonna lie. Like, I ain't even think about that. According to those in the vehicle with Vaughn, he was still conscious throughout the ride, even telling one of his friends to calm down that he was going to be okay. Around 3.32 a.m., just moments apart from each other, both crews would arrive at Grady Hospital, was which was less than 10 minutes away. Quana would start a live stream of himself helping Lil Tim inside the building to try and protect himself in case Vaughn's people ran up on him. Come on, come on, come on, he's shot! Come on, come on, get bro, you got the up. Come on. Cause I just keep breathing, bit, boy. Just keep breathing, cuz. But this wouldn't happen, and nobody else was hurt after the initial conflict at the lounge. Unfortunately, though, just after 4 a.m., King Vaughn, along with two others who were shot that night, would pass away to their wounds, taking his life and career far too soon. Damn. Lil Tim was arrested in Grady Hospital, where he was treated for his wounds before being taken into custody. He posted bail the same day, and has since been awaiting trial for the murder of King Vaughn. Kill somebody. Everybody got family. Somebody relate to him or somebody cool him. You kill him. Now everybody that, that he was close with is trying to kill you. It, it's a never ending. Or they gonna kill. Let's kill somebody close to him. It, it don't yeah, stop. Sure. To everybody, all the people that play in the game, it's gone. You see what I'm saying? Okay. It's the last man standing. It's either gonna be in jail. You gonna die. I ain't gonna lie, fool. That's why y'all can't even get into that game, bro. Like, that's why you got people like me gonna tell you and keep it a hundred, man. Like. It ain't even worth it, bro. You know what I'm saying? Like, it ain't even worth it, man. Like, it ain't even worth it. You know what I'm saying? Especially when you grow up with stuff going on like that. Like, it probably ain't worse than Chicago out here, but, man, I lost a lot of homeboys, bro. <laughs> a lot of homeboys, man. Like, I remember my nigga, me and my nigga Montre. Last time I seen Montre, bro, we was slap boxing. This was... Nah, I seen him in high school. I seen him in high school. I seen that nigga like ninth grade, but we was slap boxing in eighth grade. My nigga Montre passed. Uh, then Savage passed. Kedrick died. My cousin, man, like, he ain't died. He went to jail, God forbid. But it's crazy, man. It's crazy, bro. It's crazy. But anyway, man, long live on, man. Long live on, man. It's crazy, man. Y'all make sure y'all comment what I asked y'all though, bro. Like, get in the comment section. I'm looking at the comments for real. That's crazy, bro. If y'all watching this, make sure y'all stay out the way, bro. Go get you some money. Go be successful. Make sure you keeping God first. Raise your vibration. Get in tune with your higher self. Yo, man. Get you a female. Settle down. That's what they don't tell y'all. Like, don't be listening to these nigga bros over her. Nah, man. Get you a female, bro. Not saying, you know what I'm saying? You don't, Get you some potters and some real nigga that you be loyal with, but get you a female, bro. At the end of the day, your female gonna be your backbone. No cap, nigga. That's how that's how this was written, bro. That's how God created Earth, bro. Get you a female, man. Get out the way. Start you a family. For real. But anyway, make sure y'all drop a like on the video. Subscribe to the channel. Join the family. Appreciate y'all for rocking with me. I'm reading them comments, so make sure y'all comment. And I gotta bring my boys some over videos, so I know they gotta start a video. Let's get it, man. Tell a nigga get through some money. Ran through 20, this shit keep coming. Fuck you, tell him I'm keep coming. Send the code, then you finna fuck my stomach. I don't get a gun from Monday to Sunday. I don't know what he said, but it smell like a honey. Putting rounds in the gun, baby, bitch keep coming. Uh, 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 so I said I got blue presidents in my jeans. Uh -huh.